Okay, let's look at the intermediate value theorem, which is the first of the big theorems of calculus that I have dubbed big theorem theorems. Um, really, it's not a calculus theorem. It's more algebra-based, but it does hinge on continuity, a continuous function. And continuity is a calculus concept as defined by limits. And so if you have a function that is continuous from A to B, and the formatting on this is weird, so A to B, we'll just fix that. Um, and if K is any number between F of A and F of B, where F of A is not equal to F of B, okay, this is a big garbly, mathy mess that's hard to understand. And so uh, the easiest way to explain the intermediate value theorem there, fix that formatting, um, is really through a picture. And so we have a continuous function from A to B. So I'm just going to randomly define two points on the x-axis to be a and b. Um, f of a and f of b are not the same. So wherever you start at a, you must finish at a different value of b. And your function is continuous. So uh, f of a and f of b are your y-coordinates at those two points. OK, so if you have a continuous function that goes from this point to that point and um, k is some number between f of a and f of b. doesn't matter where you put it, but k is somewhere between those two. If I connect this point to that point, I'm going to have to cross a y value of k somewhere. If you connect them in the simplest way possible, which will be linearly, then you would have to hit k about at that point. If you choose to connect them in a wavy way, that's fine. You might hit k more than once, but you are guaranteed that no matter how you connect these two points, that there is a point C between A and B such that your function hits that value of K. So as I've drawn it right now, C is really close to A, but you're guaranteed to hit that point somewhere in the middle as long as the function is continuous. So let's look at a couple of examples using this theorem. So first one's multiple choice. You have a function that is continuous, keyword. On the interval one to three, we have a few select values given, and we want to guarantee that F of X equals five twice on the interval one to three. Which of these values for C would force that to happen? Um, you could think of this graphically. I'm real big into graphing, but I have a point at one, six. I have a point at three, seven, and those two points are defined. The point at X equals two, we're not sure, but five, I want the function to equal five two times. So I need to cross that y value twice, and the only value that's going to force me to do that is 4. If I plot a point at 2, 4, that is the only one of these four options where if I connect these with a continuous function, I'm going to have to hit a y coordinate of 5 twice, and that is your intermediate value theorem. Uh, the second one, we have a differentiable function. V. Now they said differentiable, but differentiable does differentiability does imply continuity. If a function is differentiable, it must be continuous. So we have a differentiable velocity uh, in feet per second. Uh, we are trying to guarantee that some point on zero to ten, the velocity equals thirty, and the way I'm going to do that, we have a continuous function. I see that from two to four. We go from 35 from 25 to 35. I don't know when it happens, but I know that somewhere between two seconds and four seconds, I've got to have a velocity of 30 feet per second because I go from below 30 feet, 30 feet per second to above 30 feet per second. And so we have to explain this. And on a free response question, you have to be very picky. And first, you want to establish the criteria for the theorem. So for the intermediate value theorem, continuity is key. So I would first say that V of T is a continuous function. I'll, I'll say continuous. And we are interested on the interval 0 to 10. So that velocity function is continuous from 0 to 10. And I am really interested in equaling 30 seconds. So I'm really going to focus on that. And I'm going to focus on my velocity at 2 and my, my velocity at 4. I'm going to say my velocity at 2 is 25, which is less than 30. And I'm going to stress that I'm less than the value I'm trying to achieve. And my velocity at 4 is greater. Whoops. I could go ahead and say greater than, but I'm going to say my velocity at 4 is 35, 
which is greater than 30. And because velocity is continuous, therefore my velocity must equal 30 for some t on the interval two to four. And I narrowed it down a lot more precisely than was requested. They requested zero to 10, but I've got it from two to four, which is within zero to 10. So that would be sufficient. If you want to cite the theorem, you could say by the intermediate value theorem and IVT is acceptable on the AP exam, uh, that would work. So there are a few quick examples of the intermediate value theorem and how to answer those should you run into them on the AP exam.